Angel would chat that board, and we would also. family thanks for tuning in today we are so excited that you came by our service will be starting here in just a minute so go ahead and grab your bible and we'll be back here shortly
Good morning, Evangel. Come on in. If you're in the lobby, come on in and find a seat. Come on in, come on in. How's everybody today? In the room, online, welcome online. We're glad that you're here with us today. Welcome to Evangel. Oh, look, look, that's getting a little groove going. You don't want to see me dance, so we're not going to do that. Welcome today. We're so glad that you're here. So much happening. Come on in. If you're getting some coffee, come on in. If you're dropping your kids off, come on in. Find a seat. Let me make you aware of some. I got to do it to the beat, too. <laughs> I don't even know how to do this. So, number one, tonight, 6 o'clock, is intercessory prayer. We meet the first Sunday night of the month. We would love to have you join us for an hour of prayer tonight. 6 o'clock. Come on out. Um, join us in the prayer time. Um, we just spend time praying for our church, praying for things that are happening. So tonight, 6 o'clock, intercessory prayer. It is happening. Tomorrow night, number two, guys, we're going to have a men's, uh, men's tournament basketball championship game watch party right here at the church in the youth room. If you'd like to come join us, it's 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Come on out, hang out. We'll watch the game together. We'll see who's going to win. We'll hang out and we'll just get some food, all that kind of stuff. So come tomorrow night. It's totally free, 8 o'clock. I know it's last minute, but if you'd like to come hang out, if you want to watch the game, come watch the game with us, 8 o'clock tomorrow night in the youth room. Number three, ladies, your women's tea, royalty. Oh, go back to that one. I forgot. That was, that's first. Welcome to Pastor Arrow. We are excited that he will be with us this Wednesday night. So students, students, this Wednesday night, seven o'clock, we're going to have a welcome party. Excuse me. Pastor Arrow and Hope will be here as well. And uh, this sun, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we're going to have a party. So students, you don't want to miss it. Come hang out. We have some food and games and just fun time together as we greet them. Also, they got engaged. So congratulations if they watch this later. They got engaged, so they're getting married end of June. So congratulations to Pastor Arrow and Hope. They are now engaged. That's awesome. Ladies, next one, I think, is our women's tea. Hats and royalty this Saturday, April 13th. Ladies, you need to sign up today. Jump in the app right now. You need to make sure you, there's been a huge sign up. We need to know who's coming and get our numbers in for next weekend. So please, ladies, if you could jump in the church app, Evangel app, download it, get signed up, register. You don't want to miss this Saturday, 1030 to noon. Hats and royalty. I love that. Hats and royalty. That's awesome. Next, Pete's with the pastors. If you're new to Evangel, if you're new in the last six months, seven months, eight months, and you've not been to one of our Pizza with the pastors, it is happening next Sunday after church. So we would love to have you. If you go to our app or you stop by the info center, just register there. It's totally free. We'll feed you and we'll just meet you. We want to hang out with you for a few minutes before you leave for the day. So Pizza with the pastors next Sunday right after church. Garden Club is coming on April 22nd, starting at 7 p.m. You want to make sure you're here for Garden Club. Master Gardener Kathy Wilhelm will be leading it, so that's awesome. You don't want to miss Garden Club. Number six, Youth Camp is coming. Ooh, I got a lot. So Youth Camp, students, you need to scan this QR code. Parents, you need to scan the QR code. Get registered. A $20 deposit's due when you're in there. Um, Good news is the church is giving $35 scholarships to every student that's going to go to camp this year. So that's amazing. So parents of students, I sent an email out to you this past week giving you more information about camp and all that stuff. So, but you need to get registered by April 21st, at least with the $20 deposit. So make sure you get that signed up and, get, and take place of that. Which leads me to kids camp is next, and it's coming June 23rd. And Pastor Jeff has more information about that at the kids check-in and all the registration for that. Embrace Service Day. I told you, you got a lot. April 25th, if you come help us at Embrace to serve and to help them, it's an organization that we support here Thursday, April 25th. You want to make sure you see and get involved with that. And finally, this is my last one, I believe, is Evangel Apparel. We are selling brand new Evangel Apparel. It's custom. There's a lot of samples out there at the Info Center, but you can pick and choose. If you go into our church app, you scroll down, you'll see Evangel Apparel. You can select that, and then you um, can pick. I want this color. I want a long sleeve. I want short sleeve. I want a crew neck hoodie, blah, blah, blah. You can pay for it all. Now, if you like what's out there, we have a very few limited supply of what's out there. You can buy it today. If you like to, if there's your size is out there and you like that design, feel free to pay for it and take it with you. And uh, make sure you wear it proudly and don't act dumb when you're wearing Evangel Wichita stuff, okay? <laughs> Deal? All right. <laughs> don't cut that person off and say, love you. 
in Jesus' name, or be mean to the server, and hey, I go to the end of Wichita. <laughs> um, all right, would you stand with me this place? We are excited to be in church today. Isn't it good to be in church this morning? Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm excited to be in church today. Wake up, wake up, everybody wake up. All right, here's what we're going to do. Last weekend we had Easter, we celebrated the resurrection, didn't we? But the truth is, here's the secret, we celebrate resurrection every Sunday. We celebrate resurrection every day. That's what we live. That's how we live when we follow Jesus. This is the exciting part. So let me read Psalm 140, 60, and let's get our minds ready, ready for worship this morning, because I want to be ready for what God is going to do, how he's going to speak to us this morning. Amen? You ready for this? Here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise. That's what we're about to do. How about that? I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, what happens? They return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. I don't remember how far I went. I could keep reading. Oh, he is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains what? Let's say that one more time. He remains? Lord Jesus, we come before you today, and we are ready to praise your name today. We are here to counter your presence. We are here to speak, to hear you speak to our hearts. God, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. mountains told the wind and waves be still you cast out demons bid the empty soul be filled
God, you're such a good God. We're here to praise you this morning, to lift your name on high. There's nothing you cannot do. There is no one like you, Jesus. There's no way that I'm giving up on the edge of my breakthrough. I've walked long enough to know there's a grace for me that's still enough and a hope that I cling to even in the lowest lows and there's still one thing that I, I know there's no way no way you're gonna let me down you never have, you never will, and you won't start now. There's no way, no way your promise can fail. It never has, never wants, and it never will. There's no way that I'm backing out just because I'm still waiting. This is where I'm gonna praise These Jericho walls, they're coming down Even now I feel them shaking And I refuse to be afraid There's no way, no way You're gonna let me down You never have, you never will And you won't start now there's no way, no way your promise can fail. It never has, it never wants, and it never will. It never has, it never wants, and it never will. Oh, we believe, we believe, by your stripes we are healed. I know my healing's coming, it's just a matter of time. I know my answer's coming, it's just a matter of time. I know provision's coming, it's just a matter of time. The full redemption's coming, it's just a matter of time. I know my healing's coming. It's just a matter of time. I know my answer's coming. It's just a matter of time. I know provision's coming. It's just a matter of time. Jesus, our King, is coming. It's just a matter of time. There's no way you're gonna let me down. You never have, you never will, and you won't start now. There's no way, no way your promise can fail. You never has, you never will, and you never will. And there's no way, no way you're gonna let me down. You never have, you never will, and you won't start. just a matter of time. I know my answer's coming. It's just a matter of time. I know provision's coming. It's just a matter of time. Jesus, our King, is coming. It's just a matter of It's just a matter of time. Oh. We wait on you. We wait on you, Lord. Oh.
generations falling down in worship to sing a song forever to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. second we're going to go back to a verse and here's what it says it's that second verse 
Because if you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, so I want you to think about it for a second. Is this speaks about you? If you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. If you walk in freedom, if you bear his name today, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Now, I want you to take an inward look. We're going to go back to sing that verse right now, and then we're going to go in and sing holy, holy forever. If that's you, I don't care if you have a good singing voice. I want you to sing. Don't worry about your neighbor. Where, how, who's around? You just say, if I've been redeemed, if I walk, Mark, you're talking about me right now. I've been, I've been redeemed. I walk in freedom today. There's something to this. All right, there's maybe two of you, but if you have been redeemed, I'm serious. We're going to sing this out. I'm going to turn my microphone off because nobody wants to hear that either. Got it? I just totally threw a curveball to them, so I'm getting them time to get ready. But we're going back to that verse. Let's sing it. Let's sing it. Let's meet it from our hearts. And if you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, sing a song forever to the land. And if you walk in freedom, if you bear his name, sing a song forever to the land. We'll sing a song forever and amen, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are living. God, you are holy right now. I worship you. I give you the praise right now. Oh, hallelujah. Just give him praise across this room. Hallelujah. We worship you, King. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your name is above all names. Jesus, the name above all names today. We worship and praise your name this morning, King. We give you praise and give you glory, King. There is nobody else. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. You are holy this morning. Holy is your name today, King. Hallelujah. In this attitude of worship, I'm going to invite you to be seated for a moment. I want to remember and take a t- some time with you today to think and reflect together on what Jesus has done for us. Hopefully on your way in, you were able to pick up some communion elements. If you're watching online, you would find some communion elements. If you need some, quickly raise your hand. The ushers are coming forward right now. They'll have some for you. If you didn't get it, just leave your hand up until you are served. They'll get to you as soon as they can. We don't practice closed communion. You don't have to be a member of our church to take communion. Here's the only only stipulation. We ask that you know Jesus as your Savior. If you were singing that song... You are redeemed. You walk in freedom because of Jesus. You are welcome to take communion with us this morning. Just ask that you hold it also until we're all ready and we're going to take it together in just a moment. I'm going to read from Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He says these words, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. As we stop and you take the cup and just carefully peel the top layer and you'll reveal the the bread, hold it in your hand for a moment. As we look at the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we celebrated Easter last weekend, but we look at the death and resurrection of Jesus through his atonement, we can have a new spiritual life, which we're about to talk about. Through His shed blood on the cross, we can, we can know forgiveness of sins. But through His broken body and what He went through on the cross, we can also know today physical healing in our body. And so as we pause this morning, as we stop and we just sit and reflect on what Jesus has done, there are some that we have been praying for in this place. That you would say, Mark, I am dealing with a physical issue physical issue. I see Nate right here. We've been praying for my brother. His father-in-law, Scott, we are praying for right now. I see Rachel. I'm sorry. You're behind her father. Physical needs right now. Needs in their body. There are others before I just neglect needs. There have been needs we've been praying for. You text me. Will the men pray on Thursday mornings? Will you pray with your staff? Backs, issues, just different things. You have a need in your body this morning. I believe in the physical healings of Jesus. By his stripes we are healed. Isaiah writes, Isaiah 53, 5. And you would say, Mark, I I have faith. You would just stand. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for you. I believe in the supernatural power of God today. You would stand that you need physical healing in your body. Just a, a moment of faith. You would say, I am not the healer. I don't do it. I believe in the one who does and his supernatural power and his faithfulness, that he will do it. By his stripes we are healed. And at home you're standing, where you're watching right now, you're just standing in faith. You have a physical need in your body. Lord Jesus, I pray right now. If you're seated, you see someone, just reach your hand towards them. Just begin to pray over them. You may not know who they are, just pray for them. Everyone in this room, you're just praying right now for people. You may not know their names, but you're praying over them. Our body of Christ right here. Lord Jesus, I pray for so many standing all over this room in need of physical healing. There are backs, there are nerves, there are, there are, there is um, cancer, there is, is different ailments, there is disease, God. There, I, I can't, Lord, you know every person. You created us, you made us, you formed us this morning. I'm praying as we remember the, the, what Jesus has done for us on the cross for physical healing. God, I believe right now in your supernatural power. And I pray for each person standing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know it's nothing I do, but I stand in faith with them that you are the one that moves in power. You are the one that heals. And God, I pray that as you look down that you would see the needs and you know them and care about them. And Lord, I'm praying in the name of Jesus for physical needs to be healed today. And God, when the testimonies come, it'll be for your kingdom, for your glory, for your honor that we will cry even louder, holy is the Lord forever. Holy is the Lord forever. I pray for each of these needs in the name of Jesus. Would you take the bread with me? Let's eat together as we remember today.
Amen. You can be seated. If you carefully peel back the cup, careful not to spill. Paul continues to write in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant. This cup is the new agreement in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. That there, we, we all have a, a sin problem. We are separated from God just on our own. We can't do anything to make it up. We can't do anything to correct the relationship with God. But Jesus shed his blood on the cross so there can be an atonement for our sin. There can be forgiveness of sin. That through Jesus, through what, and church, let me, I'm going to be very clear. It's only through Jesus. I'm going to say it again. It's only through Jesus. You can quote that on Facebook if you want. It's only through Jesus and his shed blood that we can have life and life to the full. It's only through Jesus. He's the only way to the Father. So today, you may be here and you're, there may be something. You, you're just like, you know, there's been something in between me and God. There's something that stands between us. And in this moment, as we remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross, you would take a moment and you would just say, God, just clean my heart right now right at your seat. You just say, God, clean my heart right now. Clean my heart right now. Lord, I pray for each person that's seated here, that we would stand before you, pure in the blood of Jesus, that we would have taken that, that sacrifice of Jesus, that we would be clean before you because of Jesus. So I thank you today for the new agreement that we can know life to the full through Jesus today. Life to the full. Hallelujah. Would you take the cup and let's drink together as we remember? Thank you, Lord. If you're able, would you stand with me once again? I love this last verse that Paul writes. He says this, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I just love those last three words until he comes he is coming he is coming again we can have that assurance today that that hope that lives through the resurrection he is coming again church he is coming again can you just lift your hands and your voice just right now just get into worship and he is coming again he is coming again today praise you lord
as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all One last time, tell him. Just tell him you love him. Just give him praise. One last time. Before we move on in the service, God, we take this one more moment. Acknowledge you. Acknowledge your greatness this morning. And we worship you in this place. Hallelujah. Your name is above all names. King of kings. Lord of lords. Worthy is your name. Lord, these next few moments as we look at scripture and your word, I pray that you would continue to speak to our heart. I pray that we would have an open heart, open spiritual ears, ready to hear what you would speak to us in these next few moments. I know you want to speak into our hearts, and God, I pray that we would be ready to hear what you are wanting to tell each of us. Thank you, King, for your presence and these moments together. We love you, and we give you your praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Could you some smile at your neighbor, give him a high five, a fist bump, whatever you need to do before you're seated this morning. Welcome each other into the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. So glad that all of you are here. If you are a guest with us this morning, thank you for joining us today. In the seat pocket in front of you, you'll see a connect card. If you would like to, we would love it if you would connect with us, get to know us a little bit more. So please fill out that card. You can drop it off at the info center on your way out. Um, we'd love to just get to know you a little bit more today. Um, our way of saying thanks for being here. We have a free gift for you. Also, there's a QR code on the seat, box, pack, seat back in front of you. If you'd like to use that way and you can do it digitally, uh, that's what they say the cool kids do. So, um, you can also go that route as well. But um, finally, uh, thank you for walking in obedience and giving. You, the giving stations are in the back on your way out, and uh, you can mark your tithe and offering on the envelopes. If you have cash and checks, um, you can do that. You can also use our Evangel app. It's a very easy way for you to give. 
I, hi, please, please, you need to download the Evangel Wichita app. Everything is in there for you. And you can, sign-ups are easier there. You can give there and all that kind of stuff. But uh, giving stations are in the back if you'd like to drop off um, cash or checks as well. Or there's a QR code like the cool kids use in the seat, by, seat backs in front of you. I actually don't know if it's cool kids or not. But um, one last thing, because she told me she'd be mad if I didn't mention it. But uh, Barbara back there, my friend, she just put her head down because she knows she'd be mad if I didn't mention it. Uh, Barbara Boken turned 95 years young this past week. Right? You said, you said uh, you'd be mad at me if I didn't tell everybody so they could wish you a happy birthday. Did I hear that wrong? My hearing's not so good. She's shaking her head, yes. So, happy birthday. So awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, <laughs> now we can move on. She's not going to listen to another word I say. Um, <clears throat> well, there are uh, cultural beliefs and, and things that for years, sayings and phrases that we use, and over the years, they've been attributed to the Bible or to what God has said. Like things that we pass down that maybe your parents have said to you, <laughs> and it's assumed that, that they are in the Bible, or it's assumed that, that they are things that God said to us. And the reality is there are things that God never said. There are things that aren't even in the Bible. There are things that are actually good. They may be good phrases and things that we like to hear or they may help us in things. But, for example, God helps those who help themselves. Have you heard that before? God helps those who help themselves. You know, that's scriptural. Or maybe you've told your kids this. Cleanliness is next to? That's not in the Bible either. I'm sorry to break it to your, your students and your, your kids. Uh, maybe this too shall pass is something that we think. Um, God works in mysterious ways. It's not maybe a good song, but that's not even in, in the Bible anywhere. Um, maybe this one, spare the rod and spoil the child. The question becomes this, though. Why are these things so popular? And you can list many, many more, right? Why are they so popular? And, and the second question that may come to your mind is, if they're not in the Bible, if God never really said these things, what's the big deal? Why does it even matter if, if, if these things are, are said or if we pass these things down or if we talk about these things? What's the big deal about them anyway? Why does it even matter? Here's the danger in these phrases. The danger in a lot of these phrases and beliefs that sound scriptural are sometimes contrary to what scripture actually teaches. Let me say that. Sometimes the danger is these Phrases and beliefs that sound scriptural are contrary to what scripture actually teaches. And these erroneous beliefs, these phrases, these things that we say about God and about our Christian walk can actually, in the end, be damaging to our Christian walk rather than helpful. And our goal here at Evangel, we strive to be healthy followers of Jesus. Healthy followers of Jesus, that in every area of my spiritual life, that I would be a healthy follower of Jesus. As a pastor, that's my goal, that you would grow in your relationship with God. That you would grow and move forward. And so these cultural beliefs and these phrases that we say, while they may seem innocent and okay, and they may be all right to talk about, they shouldn't be attributed to what God has said and what the Bible says. So we're going to talk about these things over the next couple of weeks, and we're going to look at how we should maybe approach them and some of the dangers that may come with some of them. So here's one of the, the most popular ones that we're going to start, start with, and we might as well just launch out really, really quick. And if you see the notes, you can jump in our app. The notes are there, and they should be in. And, but you, one of the biggest misbeliefs about God in our Western, Western Christianity is this. Here it is. God just wants me happy. That above all else, God just wants you to be happy today. That sounds good. I mean, we could all go home now, right? That's, that's pretty good. We feel happy. There's songs about don't worry, just be happy, right? And I would love to sit here and tell you, I would love to stand here and tell you today that above all else, God wants you happy. That above all else, God just wants you to enjoy your life. Above all else, that's, that's, his, that's his plan. That above all else, God only wants good things to happen in your life and God never wants anything bad to happen in your life because the bottom line is God wants you to be happy. And in fact, I could quote scripture for you and we could just take this verse out of context. Let me read it to you. In Psalm 97, 12, it says, May all who are godly be, you can put that up there for me. 
Next one, next slide. Next slide, can we go? Is it stuck? There we go. May all who are godly be what? That sounds pretty good. May all who are godly be, say it again, happy. But here's the truth. This is one of the big cultural mistakes in what people believe about God. They believe that above all else, God wants you happy. However, if you believe that phrase, that above all else, God just wants you to be happy, it will start you down the road of other misbeliefs. And let me just pause for a moment and talk about this theology of happiness. If you believe that God's ultimate supreme goal for you today is your happiness, here is where you will eventually or what you will eventually start to do if you have this theology of happiness, that that's God's supreme goal, my happiness, um, my supreme, here's where I will go. Number one, whatever makes me happy must be right. It's logic, isn't it? If God's supreme goal is my happiness, some of you are like, well, I believed it until you just said that. Whatever makes me happy must be right. Therefore, the other side is whatever makes me unhappy must be wrong. There's a popular song years ago that says, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. If it makes you happy, then why are you so sad? If we have this idea that God's ultimate goal, if we believe that this supreme goal of God is that we are happy above all else, then num- number one, whatever makes me happy must be right. Whatever makes me unhappy must be wrong. Number two, if I believe this, I believe then that discomfort, delay, risk, suffering, inconveniences, and obstacles cannot be God's will. If I fall into this theology of happiness, that the supreme goal of God is that I am happy, then I will come to this point where these things cannot be God's will. If something is not going correct, if something is not going right in my life, then it is not God working in my life. Number three, if I believe in the theology of happiness, then I begin to worship the false gods of comfort, money, pleasure, things, etc., all these different things. If I believe above all else that God wants me happy, one day I will get to a place where I worship the false gods of comfort, money, pleasure, things. And here's the danger. Are you ready? If we fall into this place, because it seems so innocent that we would say, God just wants us happy. But if I get to a point where I believe above all else God wants me happy, suddenly, I am forced, here's logic for you, if I get to this place, I am forced then to come to a conclusion that God exists to serve me. And here's the truth, I don't want you to miss this, do not miss this, write this down if you need to. God does not exist to serve me, God does not exist to serve you. We exist to serve God. Let me say that again, we exist to serve God. That's the danger. If God is just there to make me happy, suddenly I have come to this place. This is where I am. If I get to a place where I think God's ultimate goal is to make me happy, I have come to a place where I have reduced the great creator and sustainer of the universe, the Holy One who we were just singing about. All those names are higher than anything. All those things that we were talking about. I have reduced that God that we just talked about in those songs to a cosmic Coke machine where I can walk up, you know, the cool ones that have the screens and you can choose all the different flavors when they work. And you can put them all in there and you can pick and choose what you want your Coke to taste like, what you want it to be like. That's what I've created God to be. Oh, Mark, I wouldn't do that. But that's the machine I walk up to, I push the buttons and I paid for what I want. And when I pay for what I want, I better get what I want because it's going to make me happy. That's what I've reduced God. I would never do that. And without knowing it, I have reduced God down to some kind of formula. Hey, man, I've, I went to church. I went to church on Easter. I came to church the week after Easter. I said my prayers this week. I read my Bible this week. I gave you a little money. You talked about being obedient and giving. I felt guilty about it, you know. I scanned the QR code. I gave something today. Hey, I've been nice to my parents, students. I've been nice to my parents. I even helped my neighbor with their yard. I try not to do bad things. Therefore, God, my health should be better. Therefore, God, I should get that job. Therefore, I want my dream house now. There should, I, I, what I want should be mine. 
I, I, I want that person to go on a date with me. I want my parents to get me what I want because I've done these certain things. I should get what I want from you, God. You owe me, God. You exist to serve me, God. Because your ultimate goal was to provide my happiness. God just wants me happy after all. And here's the tragedy of this misbelief. People walk away from God for completely wrong reasons. They have this belief that God wants them happy, and it doesn't happen that way, and they walk away from church. I tried church, Mark. I tried that religion stuff. It didn't work. I tried the God thing, Mark. You know, I've had this conversation so much. I tried the God thing. It didn't work. You know, whatever, nothing changed. I even read my Bible, Mark. I did a plan in that version thing. I read my Bible. It didn't work. I went to the women's Bible study. I went on Sunday. I got up early on Sunday mornings and went at 9 o'clock. It didn't change anything. Men's prayer, I went on Thursday mornings. Nothing happened. I'm still sick. My job is still horrible. I'm in a bad spot financially still, Mark. Nothing's happening. If you believe that God exists to make you happy, and then you're not happy, it forces you to believe that God failed. And he didn't fail. We sang that song this morning too. Never have, never once, and you won't start now, right? You just said those words a few minutes ago. But if you have this theology of happiness, you believe. This is, look, look, I'm like, as I'm getting old, I'm like getting more logical. I'm thinking things through. This is where I have to end. If I believe this, this is the logical conclusion to where I'm at. And I have to get to this point where if I believe this, God's failed. He failed. I'm still dealing with all the junk that I was dealing with when I walked in. Monday morning's still horrible. My family's still a mess. God failed. But let me tell you this morning, God didn't fail. You started with the wrong presupposition. And it led you to a very dangerous place. So we need to back up. Now listen, let me, let me don't jump off one side to the other side. I, I, don't, I know it's been depressing up to this point, but God... So he's saying that God doesn't want you happy. Look, look, look. I do believe God delights in your happiness today. In fact, I read in Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saved. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. He delights in you. Psalm 147.11, The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Look. When, when, when you are happy, it brings him joy. It, it's like a parent being delighted in their child when a child has joy or happiness, okay? If you are a parent today, if you're a parent today, you can relate to this. I remember, uh, and I miss these days now, they go so fast, but I remember um, watching Alexis as she played basketball. Now she's coaching basketball and teaching, and it's just amazing to see the, where she is today. But I remember going to watch her play basketball, and, and she was always a shooter. And so she would sit, and today's the championship game for the, the ladies. It's going to be amazing. But um, she was a shooter, and when she would hit a three-pointer, when she would hit these shots, knock down these shots, or she would make a jump shot from the elbow, I mean, she was happy. And when she was happy as her dad, I'm in the stands, I was happy. I was delighting in her joy. She was happy when she would hit those shots, and she would, I, I would be happy with her. I'm cheering, I'm yelling, and I'm like, yes. But let's, listen, let me clear something up. Her happiness at that moment is not my highest priority. Let, let me explain this way. For example, if she hits the game-winning three-point shot, then it proceeds to walk over to the opponent's bench and start taunting them, yelling and screaming at them because she's so happy, I would no longer be happy. She's happy, but I'm not happy in what she's doing. Suddenly, her happiness is no longer my highest priority. Does that make sense? But for many of us, we treat God that way. He should be happy for me no matter what. If I'm over taunting the other team, yelling obscenities and doing stupid stuff, God, you better be happy in me because I'm happy right now. I want you to hear this. God does not want us to pursue happiness. God wants us to pursue Him. God wants us to pursue Him. And we don't 
pursue him for the byproduct of happiness or just to get what we want in life. It's a matter of the heart. If you want to be a healthy follower of Jesus, it's coming down to your heart. Proverbs says, guard your heart, for out of it springs the wealth of life. It's, it's the heart. This is where it's at. And so I follow God. I pursue him because it's what I'm supposed to. It's what I need. I don't do it for a byproduct. I don't do it so, so he'll give me this or do that for me. I pursue him for who he is and nothing else. I have come to a conclusion in my old age that I will choose to pursue him for who he is and nothing else. I've seen over my life, as you have seen over your life probably, the faithfulness of God in different areas. Even if you're in the middle of the junk right now, there have been moments where you've experienced it. I pursue him for who he is. Period. So I'm going to show you two reasons, and then we'll go. Specific reasons why God doesn't want to just make you happy, okay? That this phrase, God just wants you happy, is, is wrong. Here's a reason, number one. God doesn't want you happy when it causes you to do something wrong or unwise. Because remember, we go back to the logical conclusion, if it makes me happy, it must be right. If it makes me unhappy, it must be wrong. God doesn't want you happy when it causes you to do something sinful or stupid. Can I just put it that way? That may be easier to understand. You can write that down, guys. You know, God doesn't want you happy when it makes you stupid or sinful, okay? I'm going to tell you something that made me happy. There were years that I would do this, and, and um, Crystal and I would, would go and celebrate at her parents' house for the 4th of July, and I loved shooting fireworks and blowing up fireworks stuff, and, and it was so amazing. I just loved, I don't, I, this little pyro would come out, little 12-year-old Mark would come out, and, you know, you lighting fireworks and see them blowing up and all that types of stuff, and it was just awesome, and I loved it, and Crystal would just, like, roll her eyes because I would go to the fireworks tent and buy all the stuff, and we'd go with her brothers, and we were just, like, kids in candy store buying fireworks, and yes, I know they're marked up. I know how much they really cost to make, because later on in life, I worked in a fireworks tent for about seven years, and I get it. I don't, I don't like blowing up fireworks anymore because I worked in the tent for so many years, but Back then, that was what we wanted to do, and we would go buy the fireworks, and we'd leave and go, we need more, right? We need more. We got to blow up more stuff. We got to go back, and you know, what kind of, how great is this holiday that we get to blow stuff up? And so, so we would go back and buy more, her brothers and I, so we would always go to the, my in-laws for Fourth of July. And so I got really comfortable lighting fireworks. I got really, really comfortable shooting them off. It's probably not a good idea to get comfortable around fireworks. It's usually not a good idea, so kids, listen to your parents about fireworks. But um, I used to love lighting the mortar shells. That was my, my one thing. And so we would buy mortar shells, and we would just shoot them off. The bigger, the better. The louder, the better. We want to rock the windows and, and, and make these big, bright shells go up. And then we would tie them together and put tubes together. And I shouldn't say this online, but anyway. So we were just making stuff up and blowing stuff up, right, and doing all this stuff. And, and it, it became crazy. You know, sometimes I didn't, just didn't take the precautions that I needed to do. And so I found one year uh, a, a tube that I really loved. I thought, this is the best tube. And so I'm thinking, I'm going to keep this, t- this tube for next year. I'm going to use it again because it's really, really good. It's sturdy. It's better than the other tubes. And so I brought it back out with the brothers the following year. We saved it. That's a mistake number one. Anyway. And so we brought it out there, and I was going out in their cul-de-sac, and I was lighting. Um, oh, you see the picture. That's the tube. So I'm lighting the the uh, the fireworks and the shells and I wasn't really getting that far away because it you know when you light them they're going straight up and it's not a problem and I've been around them so I wasn't getting back that far I would light them I was all by myself it's dark and it's cul-de-sac and so I put I dropped one in one of the many and I started backing away a little bit I probably got a couple feet away from it before it was going to shoot and you know I was waiting for it to go and all of a sudden I just hear an explosion and you can see how it, it didn't go up. It went out. And the next thing I know, I was hitting my chest by something. And it knocks me back. And I land on the concrete. And it's like this dazed moment, right? Where everything's ringing in my head. And there's smoke all around. And then I hear people yelling, Mark, Mark. And I'm just like, am I in heaven? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, it's like that moment, right, where you're just kind of getting your head back together. And, and I, 
I no, this is not heaven. <laughs> I see the smoke all around me. And, and so I get up, and I'm like, ow. Like, and my ears ringing. And all my brother, my brother-in-laws are all running towards me because I wasn't answering. And I finally get up, and I go to look, and the shell had exploded because I wasn't careful enough. And it hit me and knocked me backwards and on the ground. And when I wouldn't respond, everyone in the family saw it happen, and then they didn't see me anymore. This is, this is an example just of kind of how we operate through life. This is going to be fun. This is going to make me happy. I don't care about the dangers. I don't care about the precautions. I don't care if it's wrong or right. This is going to make me happy. However, Proverbs says this in 1625. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to what? It leads to death. Here's the fundamental problem that so many people believe. 1 Peter 1.15 says, But just as he who called you is holy... So be holy in all you do. But here's how people translate that verse. Let's leave that up there. A lot of people will translate it this way. But just as he who called you is happy, so be happy in all you do. It starts with H. It works. But that's not what it says, is it? This is how we want to live. We want to be happy above all else. We want to be happy. Yet the Bible is showing us it's not about happiness. It's about holiness. Set apart. So we do things in the pursuit of happiness which become unwise. We run towards those things. And when we wrongly believe this above all else, God wants us happy. This belief system empowers me to do what is wrong and I will justify it in my mind. Because God wants me happy. But remember, God does not want you to be happy when it causes you to do something wrong or unwise. He does not want you to be happy that way. I would love to sit here and eat these two right here. You guys have blessed me over my birthday. I would love to just break open these two bags of Cheetos right now. And I would love to start eating these two. I don't care if you're out there. I would eat them right in front of you. And I, I, I would start eating them because you know what? It would make me happy. These two bags of Cheetos. I don't want crunchy Cheetos. No, 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 no. Puffs, man. Don't give me all the other Cheetos. This is what I want right here. This would make me happy. Don't tell me anything's wrong with me eating. Don't read what's on the back of this stuff. I don't even want to know what the ingredients are because I don't care what the ingredients say. These things make me happy. Look how I'm holding them. <laughs> don't be trying to come and get them either. I know some of you, they make you happy. But we know, if I sat and ate these two giant bags of Cheetos, we know where that's leading. It's not good. It's not good. When we're done, it's not happy times. It's sad times when we're done with eating those bags of Cheetos. But I get to this point where I, I would love to tell my boss what I think of this job. But I really need this job, and I have a family at home. I need to feed, but it would make me happy. It would make me so happy if I could just go in and tell him what I think. I'll quit this job today, because, and I don't even have another job, but it would make me so happy if I go quit this job. See the unwise? We get in this mindset. My spouse isn't meeting my needs, making me so, she, my spouse isn't making me happy. So therefore, I can justify. I can go do whatever I want because my spouse isn't making me happy. They say this is wrong, but it, it's, it's making me happy if I go over here outside of my marriage. Or we make decisions to break what God has set up because it makes me happy. God doesn't want you happy if, if it's leading you to doing something sinful and stupid. First Peter says, just as he who called you is holy, so you be holy in all you do. If you remember what, you remember that. You be holy in all you do. Number two. God doesn't want you happy when it is only, well, excuse me, God doesn't want you happy when it is only based on the things of this world. Now, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have a marketing degree from college. I'm a king marketer, not really at all. But um, here's what's amazing. I have a marketing degree, and I am amazed, and my wife will attest to this, at how much I fall for marketing. Good marketing. Let's just leave it there. How much I fall for good marketing. The other day, we were driving back from our meetings in Texas, and uh, man, that point is sale marketing. I know what it is. It kills me. It gets me every time. 
Some of you guys know what it is. And so we stop at Bucky's, and I'm going to go in and just, I'm like, let's just stop here. I don't need anything. We, we're going to go to, we went to In-N-Out and ate, ate uh, burgers. And, and I'm like, I don't need anything, but I'm going to go use the restroom before we leave and, and you know, clean his bathrooms. It's nice. So we were in Texas, and so I'm like, I'm going to run in there. And she's like, okay, I'll wait in the car for you. I'm like, great, I'll, you know, a couple minutes, I'll be right back out. You know, boom, I'm in. Bathroom's done. I'm out the door. I walk past. I'm walking past, and I'm going towards the exit, and they have those candied nuts like the covered coating candy, and I'm smelling it. I'm like, oh, Crystal would like some of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I'm probably being a thoughtful husband. I'm just going to pick that up. And so I picked that up, and I'm like, yeah, I'll get some, some candy pecans. And so I get them, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I walk, and I'm going to pay for them, and the beaver nuggets are right there. I'm like, ooh, ooh, you know what? That's pretty good, too. I, they have a cinnamon flavor. What? And so... I grab that, and I walk over, and I pay, and I walk out the door, and Crystal's in the car. She sees me carrying two things. She's like, what? That's just me running in to use the restroom. Man, I, here's the formula that a culture tells us is true. Culture will tell you better possessions plus peaceful circumstances plus thrilling experiences plus the right relationship plus the perfect appearance equals happiness. The problem is all these things are based on happenings. They are, and happenings change. That's why no one is happy all the time in the things of the world because the things of the world are simply counterfeit. This is exactly what the world does. If you get this, if you buy this, if you have this, if you trade this in, then you're going to be happy, right? Yet you are still not happy. So you go back and you buy this, you trade this, you see this, you sell this, you get this, and you're still not happy. And the cycle continues. The cycle continues. God does not want you to be happy when it's only based on the things of this world. John says this so directly in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. He says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Let me just... Let's just digest that for a moment. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Wow. Verse 16. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. God does not want you, above all else, to be happy when it causes you to do something wrong or something unwise. And God does not want you to be happy when it's only based on the things of this world. God's highest calling for you is not your happiness. Listen to me for one moment. God does not want you happy as much as God wants you blessed. Happiness is based on happenings. Blessed is based on his goodness and his presence. There is a difference. Don't run ahead of me and say, well, if I'm blessed, I'm going to get a million dollars. I can eat those two bags of Cheetos and not get fat or sick or both. (laughs) The Greek word translated blessed right there means supremely blessed, and it can be translated more than happy. God wants you more than happy. But don't get it twisted. You hear that and go, more money, perfect health, best kids, biggest house, newest car. Woo! Have you seen my Nissan Altima? Wow! But that's not what the blessed life is. It doesn't mean you won't have a bad day. It doesn't mean that your kids won't fight. It doesn't mean that your car won't start one day. Here's what it means. Listen, listen. Here's what it means. You will experience the goodness of God in the middle of some of the greatest difficulties that you face. Your happiness and the blessings are not based on the perfect, pain-free life. God has never promised you that. I don't think we put that in the brochure. God has never promised you that. Some of you are sitting here going, you're right. I, I know. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Look what he says. In this world you will have trouble. This is John 16, 33. 
that can be very discouraging when we read that part of the verse. In this world, you will have trouble. But watch the next part, right? Take heart. Why? I have overcome the world. Here's our problem. We're looking for this pain-free, perfect life, and if we don't have it, then we start blaming God. When the reality is God has come and wants to be active in our pain-filled life because we live in a sinful and broken world. He wants to be active in your life. And just because you're blessed today doesn't mean you're not going to have trials. It doesn't mean you're not going to you, you feel weak. It doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad hair day tomorrow. It doesn't mean there's not going to be storms that come up in your life. In the, but it does, in the middle of the storm, you could have a blessing. And the world's going to go, what in the world is happening? And what is that blessing? In the middle of the storm, you will have this supernatural peace of God. It is a peace of God that goes beyond our human ability to understand or comprehend. It happens, and some of you have experienced that. It doesn't make logical sense. It doesn't make human sense that in the middle of the storm, I have this peace. And the world's looking at me going, what are you talking about? How do you have peace in the middle of that? You're facing the greatest difficulty that you could possibly face, and you're saying that you have peace? Some of you are in the middle of the storm today. And in a moment, the peace of God can move in your hearts and suddenly you can recognize I can trust him even though I'm in the middle of a storm in the middle of a pain some of you in the middle of a trial you would never choose to go through what you're going through right now you don't feel like it you have what it takes to go on you're like Mark I would never choose this I don't want to do this yet for some reason when you come in this place and you spend time in worship and praise before God you you have this joy unspeakable and you have no idea how to explain it joy unspeakable People around, around you will say, how is it even possible? Your answer is, it can only come from God. Period. If you have followed Jesus for some time, you recognize this, James chapter 1. You recognize what's said here, James chapter 1. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. What? I mean, I can't even get past verse 2. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So there's purpose behind the trials that I'm going through, James tells us. And you've been through enough trials and tribulations that you recognize I'd never choose them again. But I am who I am today because God conformed me to the image of Christ. I am who I am because when I walked through this, I knew him more intimately. There was no choice for me to do but to grab onto him closely. That I walked with him more faithfully. I experienced the goodness of God in a way that I couldn't have before a bad day came. But I found his goodness on that day and I could not have chosen this joy unspeakable that I have. That's the blessing. That's the blessing different than happiness different psalm 37 4 david says this delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your hearts now here's the here's where we get off the word for delight is a little deeper it, it means to delight or enjoy but also carries the idea of being made soft and pliable and so here here's how i would explain this before we go as we seek god as we enjoy god we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything's added on to us, right? right? As we pursue God, he is the object of our affection. We're not pursuing happiness anymore. We're pursuing God. Suddenly, we are enjoying his presence. We're delighting in him is what we talked about. Then he gives us, it says, not the desires of my heart, but my heart's tied to his heart, so he starts giving me his desires. Does that make sense? He starts giving me his desires. Our desires become his desires. Then I pray, when I pray according to his will, he gives us what we pray for because we are praying specifically for his will. We are praying his desires. And suddenly I'm enjoying God. Suddenly in this moment I'm enjoying God. I am soft and pliable. I'm becoming conformed to his image, growing, becoming a healthier follower of Jesus. He has given me his desires. I'm now praying not my will, but his will. Now I'm living a blessed life. Not a perfect life, don't get me wrong. Not the pain-free, filled life, but something that is better than happiness. It is joy unspeakable. It is peace. 
It is his supernatural strength that, that when I am completely weak, it is him being strong. It is a supernatural life that I cannot explain to you. I wish I could just lay it off. I cannot explain how it works. But suddenly his power, his presence, it carries me. And I've been there. You've been there. It's this joy I speak of. Here's the point as we'll wrap this up. If you have everything the world has to offer, will you ultimately and completely be happy? The answer is no. Why? Because we were not created for this earth. Moments in happiness, moments of happiness on this earth and joy cannot compare to what's coming, what's ahead. We talked about it in communion until he comes. You, my friends, were created for eternity. You're here for a little while. You're here for a little while on this earth. And then you're gone. You were created to glorify the God of the universe. He is not here to serve you. We are here to serve him. Oh, that sounds so countercultural. You're not going to grow your church saying that, Mark. God is not here to serve you. You are here to serve him. So I come and say, I belong to you. God, that you would lead me, that you would guide me. And suddenly, when I get to this point where I do these things, suddenly I'm delighting myself in the Lord. And he begins to give me the desires of his heart, that my desires, his desires are now linked together, and I start living a blessed life. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean it's pain-free. But it's blessed because the presence of God is there. We started off by saying God wants you happy. I even used scripture to support that earlier, right? But I didn't give you the whole verse. Let's go back to Psalm 97, 12 and read the whole verse. And this brings the whole message together. May all who are godly be happy. How? What's this next three words? In the Lord. Let's look at that. May all who are godly be happy in the Lord. And now, what are we supposed to do? Crown him, our holy God. May all who are godly be happy in the Lord and crown him, our holy God. Let's not get it twisted. Happiness is never going to be found in the happen happenings of this earth. Happiness is only found in the Lord. It's deeper than happiness. It's blessings. It's joy unspeakable. It's peace. It's his power. It's his uh, presence. It's his eternity calling. God doesn't want you happy when it causes you to do something stupid or sinful or unwise. God doesn't want you happy when it's only based on the things of the world. God has something far better for you. God wants you to be blessed today. He wants you more than happy that you would tap into his goodness and his presence that in everything God is working together for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. God just wants me happy. It's a dangerous thing and belief that we are tempted to jump into. Would you bow your heads with me as we close this time together? Lord, I pray in this moment, as everyone's just seated at home listening, right now in this moment, before we leave, that our hearts will be open to what you would say to us. I don't know, God, where we each fall in what we've been talking about. But right now, I just pray that you would speak to hearts right here that you would take a moment, Holy Spirit, like you always do, that you would reach out and speak into lives today. And right where you're seated, you would just listen to what the Holy Spirit would say to you. How have you been in this area? Have you expected God to serve you? Have you reduced God to a formula, believing that he failed you? Maybe you need to correct some thinking and believe. 
Maybe you need to recommit. Just take a moment and listen to what the Holy Spirit would say to you. respond now to the Holy Spirit how he is speaking to you some of you in this room you know how you need to respond thank you King for your presence thank you King for speaking to hearts all over this room I know thank you Lord pray that we would respond to your presence. Hallelujah. If you're able, would you stand with me one last time before we leave? Let's sing this chorus. Lord, thank you for your word this morning, for your presence this morning, speaking to our hearts and our lives in this place. And as we go about our week and start our work weeks tomorrow, school weeks tomorrow, I pray that you would go with us and keep us, God, that we wouldn't get caught up in this belief that you just want us happy. God, that we would be reminded this week that we exist to serve you. We want to live in that blessed life where your presence, your joy unspeakable is there. God, let us walk that way each day this week. Thank you, King, for this day and all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have an amazing week. We will see you tonight, if you can, for prayer at 6 o'clock. Hey, Evangel family, thanks for tuning in today. We are so glad that you were here. If you made a decision for Jesus or you want prayer for any other reason, please reach out to us, evangelwichita.org. And we would also love to hear from you. You can reach us on our app as well. So have a great week. And until next time, see you later.